Um, I just want to give Waid also the opportunity to record. Um, okay, so we do, is there anything else we wish to at this stage before we move on? I don't know whether that has covered you. Um, um, I think we can move on. No, but yes, I, I am ready to move on, but I, I think even if we go back to something that we've done yesterday or, 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 or weeks ago, and that's it's what for me supply. Um, so it will manage were by um, Farid, are you happy enough with the response or, or do you still feel there is something that, 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 that we need to, to, to further clarify? No, oh, inshallah, that is, uh, it's okay for now. I got the conclusion that it's a constant struggle against one's enough, nafs and to be constantly in a state of dhakir, in a state of awareness, in a dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and put yourself in the spot of a slave that Allah has given you that ability and not transfer that power to you that you can do what you want to. Because that, that's, that is how important our aqidah is. That's, Alhamdulillah, Imam mentioned that at the beginning and how strong your aqidah is and to know properly your Akira. Otherwise, if we understood incorrectly before that Allah then gives His power to us and then we can do what we will, then that would be incorrect. The, the, real, answer, the real answer to your question, Farid, actually lies under the, 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 the um, subject of, of the sawuf, you know, how the, the nafs needs to be uh, 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 controlled. controlled. Yeah. Yeah, no, but, but Farid, it's related. It is related. Yeah, Farid, you, you actually, I must say, the way you have now summarized it at the end doesn't sound to me as if you have any gaps now. It sounds as yeah. if you are at least on a solid footing now. You haven't overcome the problem, but you at least know how to go about facing them. Uh, Ti Amina, did you want to uh, add anything or, or, or ask anything at this stage? Before we move on, I get many the the sawuf question. Yeah. Yeah. Many the people that say me, "Can you ria ria?" As in the last one, um, from the answer to, "Oh, so, oh, so, oh, so, niat, oh, so, ah, so, oh, so, niat." But in a case of what to do, must, oh, so, that there is new, oh, so, that check, so that 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 the ria come up and, yeah, just that kind of recognize. Subhanallah, what a, what a profound point you are making, Ti Amina. It's, such a, it's some, such a simple point, but such a profound, profound, profound point. Let me, let me <laughs> uh, uh, share with you, all of you, um, that I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to make, before we start these lessons, because I am leading the lesson, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before we start to protect me from not claiming anything that doesn't belong to me. That Allah must guide me and use me as an instrument, as a tool. And I say this every time when I am asked to make an input or, 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 or to, to present something because it is so easy when you start doing things and you know things and you have money or power or knowledge or whatever that you start forgetting where it comes from. Then you start using it to create a platform for yourself and that's where the question of Ria uh, 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 comes in. So shukran for that reminder. The Amina, we're going to go over now, uh, inshallah, uh, to the next area. Um, emulating. Yeah, we said emulating, but we're going to go over to the next shifar.
Yeah. Allah. You know, this one. What is will? What is will? Is there anyone that would like to uh, offer the farid? How do you understand what is will? When you talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is will? What is divine will? If you if if you rather not want to, then that's also fine. Uh, no, no, inshallah, it's good that as I can try and see if it's correct. If it's not correct, inshallah, that's why we're here. We have to learn, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Um, yes. Well, of my understanding regarding to Allah is that Allah has the will to do anything and that he, Allah does not need to consult anybody to do something. So Allah can just do as He pleases. Okay. Yes. Yeah. In, in fact, that's exactly it. Allah can do exactly what Allah wants to do. Um, will should also be understood as the authority, the sole authority to determine whatever happens in creation. We can say that there are laws uh, in the universe and in other dimensions of existence. Let, let's remind ourselves. <coughs> When we say, we talk about the laws of the universe, don't let us fool ourselves to say that those laws are the only laws. That's only one level of existence. There are other levels of existence that's totally unknown to us. Those levels... <clears throat> um, the laws would be different. Now Allah is the one that makes things happen in all levels of existence and creation. When Allah speaks about Allah is in control as the one who is in control of all the, does Allah say world? Allah says plural, worlds. Allah says and, 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 and informs us that Allah is in control of all the worlds. Now, nothing. Now, if we just think of the, 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 our material universe, and we look at how vast it is, that Allah subhanahu wa I almost want to just jump across to another screen and show you something. And I'm going to do it now, yes. I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to just show you something now. Um, yeah, yes. Okay, let me, let me do this. Most of us will probably be on this map somewhere on that map, right? Or close by. Now somewhere in that is a person and that person is you. <laughs> and the way you are going to cope with, with whatever is going on, you're going to use your mind. So you take the size of your brain, you as a person, in a map of this that's this big, can you actually see how big your brain is if you look at this compared to the map? You must have special eyes to be able to see even the person. And if you take it from there, you all know what that is. Where's that place that we showed just before this now? You can not even, if you were to make a dot on the screen. This doesn't show up on, oh, it does not? Can you see the arrow? 
if you if I point the arrow there, that's more or less where we are. That point of the arrow is too big. It will cover more than the area that we've shown just before. Now this is just the earth. So now we go to the next one. Oh no, the next one is there. <clears throat> what is this? It's the solar system. The blue one that's going past. Um, the third ring from the sun is the planet. And that planet is so small, it actually, as it stands there now, it's bigger than uh, uh, in relation to the whole thing. Um, so this forms part of What is this? That's what we call the Milky Way. See when you are uh, in lockdown and the clinkers come there, I used to and I must have been prepared with for others. For others, my apologies for that uh, moment that I slipped away. Um, so you, we we have we have the solar system, and from the solar system we go to the Milky Way, and when you talk about the Milky Way, remember where we started, moving from there. And the Milky Way, if you take one of the dots, um, let me just, in fact, it's here. Can you see where the arrow is? There where the arrow is, one of those dots, just one dot is the entire Milky Way. The entire uh, uh, solar system. The entire solar system is one of these dots there. And you go to a picture of the universe itself, then one of these dots is the entire Milky Way. What are we talking about? Now, if you take all of that, you roll it back, you roll it back to where we are and where we're sitting now. Every single thing, every single thing happens waiting on the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it to happen. Listen to what I'm saying. Listen carefully. Every single thing from there to there to there to in the deepest recesses of this world doesn't have the power, doesn't have the ability, doesn't have the will or the authority to happen unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs it to happen allows for it to happen. So when we talk about the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't think it's just something that Allah has created the universe and then allows it to happen. It's very, very, very important for us to actually uh, remember that. Let me just go back to where we were. <laughs> um,
Allah's will can never be changed. Now you will say, ah, that's most obvious. Of course, Allah's will can't change. Who can change Allah's will? So, how do we now understand that nothing can happen unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills for it to happen? And Allah's will can't be changed, it can't be opposed, it can't be altered. So, is it correct now to say, and this is a question I'm going to pose now, anything that we see around us, anything it doesn't matter, or anything we do, is because Allah has willed for it to happen or for it to be. Is that correct or not? It's a question I'm asking. Is everything the will of Allah? Yes. Is it? Yes. Do we all agree that everything is the will of Allah? Yes. But if why? I'm asking you now specifically, Farid. Is everything the will of Allah? Everything is in the will of Allah. Everything in the will of Allah. Language specification. Everything happens by the will of Allah. And there's no mistake in it. We're not Allah talking about the mistake now. Gives. Is it the will? Is it everything that you see around you, is it the will of Allah? Can anything else happen outside the will of Allah? No. No. So okay. everything is. Now listen to what the group called the Jab Jabariya said. They said, everything happens because Allah has willed for it to happen. That is correct, is it not? Can anything happen if Allah wills for it not to happen? Can something happen if Allah wills no. that it should not happen? No. No, otherwise things can just happen all over. Allah wants for it to happen or not happen. And here things just happen all over. So it's utter chaos. One can't even consider that as a possibility. Now this group, the Jabariya says, we believe that, that Allah is in control and Allah's will overrides everything. If Allah wills for something to happen, it will happen. If Allah wills for it not to happen, then it will not happen. Therefore, we're not really going to make any effort. We will just take things as they come. If I want to do something bad, they say, this is what they, they say. If I want to do something bad and Allah wills for me not to do the bad, Allah will prevent me from doing it. If Allah wills for me to do the good, then Allah will allow me to do the good. So I can do whatever I want. And um, at the end of the day, whatever it is that I do will be the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is it so? Are they wrong what they are saying? It's a question I'm asking. Is it wrong what they are saying? <laughs> it's not wrong what they are saying. What they are saying is 100% correct. Nothing can happen, good or bad, if Allah doesn't allow for it or gives permission for it to happen. But where they go wrong, where they go wrong 
is in the other part. They say they can do what they want because Allah will not punish them because it is the will of Allah. They're only executing what Allah wants them to execute. That's where they go wrong. Because Allah doesn't take your choices. Listen carefully. Allah's will is above your will, but Allah has given you choice to decide what you want to do. And Allah created the world with good and bad. There's no compulsion for us to do good. Allah orders us to do the good and instructs us to do the good, um, but with choice. Because if Allah wanted to force us to, to, to do good only, we would never ever be able to do wrong, right? It's obvious. What the Jabariya, in fact, did not factor in was that Allah has given us choice. Allah does not will or determine all our choices. Let me repeat that. Allah does not predetermine our choices. Because if Allah predetermined our choices, there would be no reward or punishment. Because then we would be, uh, we were, would have no role in deciding what to do or what not to do. We can't benefit from something like that and neither can we be punished for it because we have, we've had no hand in making the decision. So the question of the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that we must understand and we'll come back to this question if time allows, inshallah, and we'll get to the point of understanding predestination and preordainment that Allah has the will to make it happen that's above anything in the entire creation. But Allah has given at the same time, Allah has given um, human beings free will and choice. And free will and choice uh, comes with the responsibility of having to account how have you made your choices? What have you decided to do or not to do? At the end of the day, if you want to do something bad, it's possible that Allah can stop you. But we're not going to go into the whole question of Qadr and Qadr now. The, yeah, I think we must understand Allah's will is primary. Nothing overrides that or can oppose it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also given us as human beings free will and choice. Um, and it is a level below. It's what we call secondary. Um, it's, it's a secondary ability to choose. But Allah's decision is right on top uh, 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 of ours. Now... Um, <laughs> I want to, I want to um, pause there on this one. But we've dealt with knowledge. Oh, sorry, we're going to come to knowledge. We've dealt with power. We've dealt with will. Now, the reason why the two are linked is one can have the will to do in, in a worldly situation. And this is only to explain it. This is not the way we say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works. Nothing about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is based on need or dependence. This is just to explain it, how we would understand something. If we say the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah has the will to do something. Let's use a human example. I want to, I want to get up now and um, 
and walk from here to there. That's my will. But does it mean that I am going to be able to walk? There's a requirement. I have to have the power or the energy to actually get up. A person who is sick, who's lying in bed, has the will to get up, but can't get up because they're sick. Their legs, they can't walk. There's something wrong with their legs. So you can see the link between power and will in a worldly example. Um, and we're going to come to the question of knowledge so that it becomes even more clear and see what the linkage is. Um, and then maybe at the end of, of, of that process, the whole thing about uh, Qadar and Qadar will become a lot more clear. But Allah has the authority to determine what happens in creation, in the entire creation, from A to Z, for every single iota of event or entity that is present, it cannot move, it cannot come into existence, it cannot even die without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to uh, throw it open now um, and find out if there are any other comments or questions which people would, would want us to clarify. Uh, so um, I'm throwing it open now. Yes, Peter Sali. Yeah. Uh, would it be correct if I uh, put some plan into action? Uh, I've decided on something and I want to put it into action. Um, can I say this is my effort and it's my planning and, and my action and this is what I achieve? <laughs> you know, because I've done it, I've planned it, and I've put it into action, so it's my achievement. Yeah, you know, it depends at what level one is at in your spiritual development. At the level of Islam, there's three levels of belief. The first level is the level of Islam. That's where we do all the arkans, the five arkans, um, uh, pillars of Islam. We all know what they are. Then we have the arkans of Iman. And then we have um, the Iman. level of Ihsan. Now, th those refers to the three levels. There's another level, uh, and that's the level of Irfan, which people don't speak about because it's not common knowledge. So you have actually four levels, technically, the level of Irfan. Irfan is where you become a true intimate knower of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you reach that level. So you have the level of Islam. At the level Correct. of Islam, you've made your plans and it worked out exactly. And you tell somebody else, yeah, I've, I, I've applied for the job and I got the job. Can you say that? Is that okay? At the level of Islam, yes, it's okay. There's nothing wrong in it. At the level of Iman, we now have to factor in these things that we are talking about now. And what are we talking about? We're talking about the ghaib, we're talking about the unseen world, and we're talking about the level of um, the level of uh, Ihsan and even Irfan. At the level of Irfan, we do nothing. We can't even think. We can't even think. We can't even talk without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that level of belief. So, the person who says he's doing it is both, he's both right and wrong. <laughs> it's a short answer. <laughs> he's both right and he's wrong. Because it depends at what level you are making an assessment of whether he, he has done it or not. Hmm. Is there anything uh, else? 
Yeah, I, I, I want to add, uh, uh, this is just my, uh, uh, I'm not uh, trying to be, it's just for the others uh, uh, also to, 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 to learn, to learn that, uh, like I had said, let me just repeat, I decided, uh, uh, I worked something out and I decided I'm going to do it. And it's my will. I put it in paper on paper, and I put it into action, and it's worked. Now everything which I did, my will must must. Uh, uh, um, how can I say this now? It must coincide with the will of Allah, and that is when the thing will happen. Otherwise, if my will didn't coincide with Allah's will, it wouldn't have happened. Whatever I've decided and planned, my will has got to uh, coincide with Allah's will, then it will happen. Now, if I want to play devil's advocate with you, Imam, <laughs> so does it mean yeah. that Allah's will always applies so it doesn't matter what my will is. <laughs> In other words, if you say, <laughs> if it coincides with Allah's will, um, then it doesn't matter what my will no, no. is. No, the, the, the point I'm trying to make is, You know, nothing would, would, would happen if Allah don't want it to happen. Whatever I will. Whatever I will. No, if it's, if it's, it's not in my... Uh, if Allah hasn't... Uh, uh, and I can will what I want and nothing will happen because Allah hasn't sanctioned me. The reason why I'm saying this, Imam, is the, the word sanction. Yeah, no, the reason why I'm saying this, Imam, is it's, I want all of us to ponder on this. It's something that we must take home, mm. think about, and um, see if we properly understand it. Because if we don't understand it properly, it means that our belief system is insecure. Does it mean that when, as long as it coincides with Allah's will, in fact, Imam, you're right. <laughs> the short answer is you're right. It must coincide with... No, no, what, 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 I, what I want to say is, if you succeed, it's because of, 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 of Allah's uh, will. Allah wanted it to happen. And if you fail, it's because Allah didn't want it to happen. Now, now if you succeed or you fail, then who are, are you liable for punishment and reward in that instance? Allah will for it to happen. You did something good, Allah will for it to happen. Um, but are you going to get reward for it? You see, uh, <laughs> these things... Uh, where, where does, I can't understand where the reward part comes in now. No, you're doing something good or bad. Good or bad hmm. gives a consequence of reward or punishment. But you're yes, saying yes, yes. that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, will, will, will reward you if you are doing something good, but if you're doing something bad, it means that uh, you will get punished. But Allah has prevented... <laughs> we, we're going to come back to this. We're going to come <laughs> okay. back to this. I, I think, think it's important. I think, um, I think we must make an effort. Whether it, Allah, whether it is good or whether it is bad, we must make an effort and Allah will reward us 
if it is a good intention, Allah will reward us. If it's a bad intention, Allah will punish us. But ultimately, Allah has the, the final say with uh, uh, something will happen or not. And if it's bad, let me let me if ask. Our, the, if, uh, if our effort or intention is bad, then we will be punished. And if it's something good, we will be rewarded. <laughs> So why why can't Allah then not give us all to benefit and let us only do good? Because it's waiting on Allah's will anyway for it to happen, is it? <laughs> you see, it's not. It's these things are not at the one level. We can explain it very simply. The simple answer when it comes to um, uh, the level of Islam is. Um, Allah orders the good and you will get rewarded yeah. for that. And if Allah orders that you stay away from the bad and you will get punished for that. That's simple. But we're going to come back to this issue so that we understand it properly. But before we leave here, let me just make this statement. We are different from anything else. Our time is going to run out soon. Um, and that is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the ability to choose. The moment we exercise our choice, whether it is good or bad, we must take the consequences of our decisions. Ultimately, no matter what we decide, good or bad, Allah has the authority to determine what we must do or not do, but Allah generally allows us to execute our choices and Allah has warned us what the consequences are going to be good or bad if we do X or Y. Now, for now, I think, let us get to the next ifad, which is the one about knowledge. Then all three of these things will actually fall, fall uh, nicely um, come together uh, because that is the third part that makes us, we are trying to understand uh, preordainment without the third component, and that is the one of knowledge. So before, we got half a minute left. Before we leave, I want to thank everyone for what was a, a, a very fruitful uh, engagement. And we're going to ask um, Imam Hussein to, to, to make dua for us, uh, inshallah, before we end off. Yes, sir. so what, what Tasal is saying, that, that, that uh, the sifat, of knowledge will complete the understanding of, of the three sifats, inshallah. Looking the, the, forward the, to next week. Yeah, the, the scholars call it the, the three linked sifat. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, power and, and, and work. Tafadal. Power, will, and knowledge. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbihi ajma'in Alhamdulillah illazi Alhamdulillah ala ni'matil islam wa ala ni'matil iman wa ala ni'matil ihsan ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم واهدنا ووفقنا للحق وإلى طريق المستقيم ربنا تقبل منا بسر سورة الفاتحة